If you're finding that you don't have enough time to run a quality QSRA, quantitative schedule risk analysis, I would recommend that you review part one of this two-part video series titled My Top 5 Time Savers and Safran Risk. In the first video, we focus on the time-related aspects of producing a project QSRA. And in this second part, I'm now going to share some ideas on what you can do with the time that you've clawed back using Safran Risk to sow seeds of value back into your project. My name's Chris Ritson. I'm the Senior Risk and Uncertainty Consultant here at Safran Risk. And as an experienced project risk manager, I've had the opportunity to utilize various risk management and risk analysis Monte Carlo tools for highways, major civil engineering, rail and tunneling projects. Throughout my career, I've experienced firsthand in near equal measure, the skepticism and the excitement of adopting typical and advanced risk techniques on UK projects, large and small. The common denominator to both of these feelings is that the practice of risk management actually promises quite a lot, with the reality being that it's not yet reaching its full potential, which is why I'd like to share some thoughts on how I'd reinvest the cumulative time saved from using Safran Risk. The three areas that, for me, add the greatest value Fully and holistically integrating time and cost risk models without trying to subjectively interpret an interface between the, say, two separately generated models. Getting creative, following intuitive leads and exploring various what if proposals and evaluating the cost benefit trade offs of various scenarios. And finally, not just concluding a recommendation to your senior team, but taking the time to elaborate a message that resonates with different stakeholders and ideally gives them something to deliberate over and make a tangible, well-informed decision. So the first way to increase value is to integrate cost and time risk into the same model. It is then that you start seeing patterns emerge that would otherwise remain hidden or just be purely speculative. This should prompt new kinds of conversation with your team, stakeholders and decision makers. What I'm going to do now is run through a simple example of how you might probe an integrated model and start to experiment with what if proposals and then look at crafting contextually relevant messaging around any recommendations that you subsequently make. Instead of just saying I followed the minimum mandatory QSRA process and your P50 is X, job done, box ticked. I'd like you to remember that it is easy to create what I would call a soft what if scenarios with minimal administrative fuss. For example, with the risks and uncertainties to include or exclude, whether they're at pre or post mitigated positions, and whether the correlation matrix is switched on or off. This enables and makes the following example so much easier and natural to perform or to just sort of scratch the itch of curiosity, as I think I said in the last video. So in this example, we have a fictional project where we're going to design, fabricate, construct and test fly some unmanned aerial flying vehicles or drones, if you prefer. And in this scenario, we've already run the Monte Carlo simulation. The first thing we might want to do is look at the sensitivity analysis report. And we notice that 80 percent of all the schedule impact is actually found in just the top seven risks. And then the top three are all attributed to the testing phase of the project. So what we can do is we can create a scenario report within the distribution comparison, which are all saved inside Safran Risk's database. The testing phase of the project centers around hiring a disused airfield, so we can test fly our drones. Here you can see the testing phase of the project summarized as a hammock of activities, which is 107 days long. And the child elements have all these risks mapped to them. So with multiple risks and uncertainties stressing the schedule, which subsequently impact on both on time dependent and time independent costs. You can see here that the hiring of the test site is just a single lump sum base price of 590,000. But what we've then done is linked it to the hammock of the testing phase and then said that 20% of the cost is actually anchored. It's spent. It's not going to change. It's fixed. So that 20% is here. And the 80% remaining is variable, which is here. And it's this variable portion of the cost that translates longer higher durations due to risk and uncertainties into additional prolongation costs. Or maybe it will even cost less if the time saving opportunities are realized. So what the system is automatically doing for us is taking the variable portion, dividing it by the 107 days, and then giving us the day rate, or maybe you call it a burn rate of 4,411 per day. So for every day beyond the deterministic date, it, it will cost this much more. And for every day saved, it will save this much money. And we can also see, because we've mapped it to the cost activities, that this cost is going to be incurred here within our deterministic cash flow profile, which you can see moving around 
with each iteration of the step through feature of our Monte Carlo, or you could use your probabilistic cash flow report instead. So the typical and most basic method of exploring a what if scenario would be to hypothesize the likely change targeted mitigation strategies would deliver. So in our example, we can look at the two top schedule risks affecting the testing phase of the project, testing and the weather downtime. So for the first one, we propose supplying an extra diagnostic team to speed up the root cause analysis of the testing problems, get those drones fixed, flying again sooner. So we're on the airfield for less time. Now this is going to cost us upfront investment of 25,000. And as for weather downtime, somebody notices that this disused airfield has disused hangar, which means that the wind speed, as it creeps up, we can actually just move indoors and resume drone test flights at no additional cost. Having already ran the Monte Carlo simulation to give us a baseline recorded in our distribution comparison report, we can now quickly rerun the Monte Carlo simulation a couple more times where just these risks are deemed mitigated and add their S curves into the comparison report as well. This grants us our first perspective where we can see the brown S curve is our pre mitigated position, creating a baseline to measure effectiveness against. And we've selected the P80 confidence value for this. Then considering just our weather risk mitigation in the green curve, we're registering a slight time saving, which in turn is converting into 22,000 worth of time dependent cost savings. And then we can also layer on the next mitigation, the extra diagnostics team. And despite paying for 25 grand upfront investment for this additional team, we can almost consider it a net neutral cost because we've saved 22,000 via the weather mitigation. So the combined effect of the savings against the pre-mitigated baseline is over 145,000 and the cost benefit analysis with one strategy virtually funding the other is obvious. The second perspective might be, well, that was just the cost of hiring the airfield, but what about the labor costs associated with the original testing team themselves? So we can actually layer in some more curves and send and keep as many as you like within the database. So now we're showing both the airfield hire costs, but also the labor costs, which are also time dependent. This then leads to a logical third perspective, a top down view that merges all those curves together to see the combined cost savings being proposed. Again, the table on the left hand side, we can see that the net benefit is going to be 410,000 combined. Now, please don't mistake me, this is an overly simplified example, but the essence of my pitch is to make the subject matter more engaging and contextually relevant by creating a narrative where one mitigation then justifies the expense of implementing another. It reinforces your recommendation in your final report, making it more likely to be understood, remembered and incorporated, as well as being harder to challenge and remove at a later date, say for the sake of a round of cost optimizations or something, which tends to happen on big projects all because the power of your story will be remembered. Another means of effective communication, perhaps for a, a broader audience, is to be visual. It's very easy within Safran Risk to create your own custom layouts. So again, it's very easy to run a what if with certain risks switched on and recording the various risk adjusted positions within spare user defined fields to draw additional Gantt chart visuals. And here I continue with the example of the pre-mitigated weather downtime and testing glitch risks at P80 confidence, yellow and hot pink respectively, as well as the underlying estimating uncertainties of activity durations, which is in the salmon pink color. And all other risks from the risk register are then shown as black bars. Or alternatively, a box and whisker style Gantt chart with all the risks enabled, but giving you the full range of volatility between the P1 and the P100, so it's kind of the purple whiskers, for each activity with P50 and P80, green and pink boxes, indicating the likelier positions. The additional insight that you may have spotted being the compounded effect of subsequent delays is shown in unambiguous terms where the P1 has diverged far from where the original deterministic end date has actually been. So communicating in ranges rather than single point estimates also helps land a message. We must resist the temptation to deliver the contractual minimum requirement of just a single point answer. So in summary, Safran Risk is going to save you time through its intuitive design, leveraging historical actuals for an evidence-based approach, whilst providing automated feedback on your inputs, reducing errors and anomalies entering into your model. Furthermore, detective mode coupled with modern computing horsepower helps you turn the needles in the haystack faster, like bringing a magnet. So you may recall from the first video that this effectively means that you go around steps two, three and four of the iteration loop fewer times than with other software. 
And for those occasions where you've clawed back time, you can now reinvest it into three areas as demonstrated in this video. Integrated time and cost, exploring what if proposals and trade offs, crafting effective recommendations and the communication thereof. So we can nudge and encourage the stakeholders who receive the outputs typically at the end of the standard process to become more proactively involved in the model making and value creating process. So hopefully you've seen how risk management techniques really could influence project performance and deliver on the expectation of value protection, but also value creation as well. The risk profession should be at the heart of breaking down team silos, prompting collaboration and helping decision makers rewrite the end of their project story through an appreciation that a robust team appraisal has taken place. Tangible options have been explored and their trade offs against competing objectives have been measured. And context sensitive recommendations have been promoted and justified with tangible alternatives for consideration and that we haven't just wheeled out the first single point P50 minimum contractually required answer, plus maybe say the top 10 risk, because that's all we had time for. There's no excuse for this anymore. So this concludes our video on a few of my favorite ways to add value to a quantitative schedule risk analysis. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to visit our website at safran.com, check out a few case studies and read our blog, download a trial, or join us for a live learning session. In the meantime, I'd like to say thank you for taking some of your valuable time to join me today. I hope you'll be sure to check out the accompanying video to this one.